Um, still close to him today. Still talk to him. I was talking to him yesterday, as a matter of fact. What's he um, saying about the matchup? Nothing. We don't really talk about the matchup. Um, you know, uh, it's just friendly conversation. How much? Pretty, of the, how much of the offense has changed since? A lot. <laughs> a lot. Um, if Chris was to be here, he would have no idea what's going on right now. So a lot has changed. You can't give him any secrets. No, I'm not giving him anything. He can't give secrets away. He don't know nothing. It's Everything pretty, changed. It's pretty ironic, though, right? That, yeah. I mean, did you think about that? Do you, you guys mention that at all, how ironic it is that his last game of his career is going to be against I guess the team he started with. No, we don't really talk about it, but it is ironic. Um, I bet he wouldn't have it any other way. You know, he would try and go out and make a statement. So uh, it's, it'll, it'll be fun. Was it always about him just really wanting to go back and what didn't have as much to do with him not getting to play quarterback? No, I don't think that had anything to do with it. Um, talking to him when we were freshmen, we were all homesick, um, some more than others. And, you know, Chris ex being extremely close with his family, I don't know, you can't blame a kid for wanting to be around his family. Your reaction to being named All-American? Happy. Uh, you know, I'm happy about it. Uh, you know, thank God for it. Did you want that unanimous? Decision? It would have been nice. Um, but, um, you know, everything isn't for you. You know, something that my dad has taught me since a little kid. So, you know, what's yours is yours and what someone else's is someone else's. You know, someone else deserved that. That was meant for someone else. I, I, I feel like I've gotten what I deserve. Well, Mike got it in 2010. Is he mm. talking smack? No, nah, he won't. Um, if, if we did talk about it, he was just like, man, you wish you, wish you could have got it. Stuff like that. Uh, we don't really talk too much smack to each other about stuff like that. We talk smack to each other, just not about stuff like that. What do you talk smack about? Each other. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, cracking jokes, whatever it may be. Speaking of the mic, you finally got to play. Mm -hmm. uh, He's the best friend. How cool was that for you? Oh, man, it was exciting. I was happy for him. He texted me before the game. He's like, I'm active. I was like, okay. You know, I was extremely happy for him. You know, we talked throughout the entire season. Just tell him, you know, be patient. Your time will come. You, you guys know. were practicing since Sunday, but did you get to watch any of the games? Yeah, absolutely. Um, got to see the whole game, actually. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Did you, how do you think he played? He played pretty well. I think he I played thought, amazing. Right? You know, um, a lot of people were probably doubting, you know, whether it's because of his talent. You know, we, us being here, we know what Lil Michael's capable of. We're around him every day, so that was it. wasn't surprising to me that he went out and did what he did. He described the seasons kind of like he was redshirting again in, in the NFL. I mean, did you have to talk him up uh, once or twice at all during the season? I mean, I mean we just talked about it as a competitor. You, know, you want to play. You want to be out there. You want to play. You want to be able to contribute to your team in some way, shape, or form. I just told him, man, you're out there living a the dream. You're getting paid. Whatever the case may be, you making a paycheck every single week. So, you know, just be happy that any time I come, just be patient. Has it been nice for you to have a close friend going through that right now? I mean, you're Absolutely. obviously hopeful to, Absolutely. to do the same thing. Because I can pick his brain. Yeah. You know, um, he's been where I'm at now, and now he's somewhere where I want to be. So, um, that, uh, it's extremely, you know, helpful to have somebody there already so he could tell me in advance what to expect, yeah. what he's going through, what he's experienced at that level. He was a second round pick, obviously. I think Dion's projected first round pick coming up, and I know you guys are focused on. Fiesta Bowl in Kansas State, but for you a little bit, is it it's sort of tempting once in a while to kind of kind of see where you might fit or, or what, what people are Me and Mike were just talking about this. Yeah, last week I think it was. I mean, you go from man, I want to play in the NFL, and then you get here, you're like, okay, I still want to play in the NFL, and then you reach a point where you're like, I wonder where I'll go. I wonder yeah. what I wonder if I get picked, what round I get picked. You wonder if I will get picked, then know what round I get picked. You know, we we're just having this conversation sure, the other day. Sure. So I mean, every now and then you kind of think like, I wonder. You yeah. know, yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong with wonder. Yes. Haven't been around Dion is, you know, five years now. You guys together, fun to see him as in, in that sort of sort of class. And he, Oregon hasn't had a first round pick. I don't think since Jonathan yeah. Stewart. Since Jonathan Stewart, yeah, um, you know, that's amazing. But Dion is, you know, he's a freak of nature. You know, he's not your everyday defensive end. And um, if you look at what he does on the field and what he does on a daily basis in practice, you know, there's no one more deserving than him. At what point do you, does the fan part like when you're growing up, you have a favorite football team or whatever? Is there a point where you start think where that goes away because you get drafted by any team and they become your favorite? I think it goes away as soon as you get drafted. <laughs> you know, it has to. I, I can't. It's kind of like coming to college. You have a favorite college team, whoever that may be. It's like if I was a fan of SC, I couldn't come to Oregon. Like, man, we're playing SC. I hope they win. <laughs> you know. And so I feel like once you make that commitment or someone makes that commitment to you, that all that fan stuff goes away. You know, you're a fan of your team. I was talking to Dion about this. He's the guy who switched positions, and now is a projected first-round pick on defense. You switched positions as well. Was there a point after you became a running back here that you thought when he kind of 
realize like yeah I can I can have a professional career at this position was it right away when you made the switch or was there a point over the past few years I mean I've always felt like that you know whether it was at DB or you know running back I feel like you have to make your way you have to make do with what you have and what you're given so for me I've, I've always thought that but you know, kind of talking to Coach Cam throughout my career here, once I made that switch to running back, you know, he's kind of led me in the right direction constantly in my ear about things like that. So it was probably, you know, my sophomore year when I kind of thought to myself, okay, I, I can I can make this a career. I can do this. You know, it took a while getting to playing running back again, you know, not playing for a year, not carrying the ball. So it took a little bit to get back into the rhythm, rhythm of things. And once I did, I thought to myself, okay, I can make this happen. Kansas State, you guys are finally talking about them, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. What do you see on their defense? Oh, they're just an athletic defense, you know, from an offensive standpoint. Um, great playmakers on that side of the ball. Um, they have two corners and a linebacker that are all over the field making plays, 24-3. You know, the interception guys taking them back to the house. So, you know, they have some playmakers on that side of the ball. You seem to be very disciplined, number one, in the turnover ratio, number mm -hmm. one, two with the penalties. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you've seen? Yeah, I mean, they're a very disciplined team. Um, you know, their coach does a great job with them and, you know, dialing them in and making sure that they're disciplined. But when it comes to turnovers, whether it's an interception or a fumble, you know, that's more of an offensive thing. You know, uh, a lot of times defensive uh, make the right defensive call on the right place at the right time. But when it comes to fumbles, you know, that's on the offense. You got to be mindful of the ball. So, you know, that's something that we'll have to do. What is your plan uh, for yourself? Are you moving back to L.A. and then just going to Arizona and then, and then back home? Well, I'm going back to L.A. to be with my family, going back home to be with my family for Christmas, for the holidays, obviously. I'm not going to be anywhere else for that. But, um, you know, go from L.A. to Arizona, then take care of everything else after that. Are you moving out of, out of Eugene? Are you yeah. going to train in L.A.? I'll be going from Eugene, um, 23rd, probably my last day out here. Is that weird? To it is. You know, this has been my life. Um, this has been my home, you know, for the past four and a half years. You know, I don't know anything different you know I go home sometimes and I'm kind of lost I kind of forget where things are stuff like that so you know this has been my home for the past four and a half years and it's kind of like you know leaving California to come here now it's like I'm, I'm leaving my home to go back to a place that I'm not really familiar with anymore so you know it feels weird it's strange but you know it's a part of life it's a growing process what are you gonna miss the most just being around my team you know being in this atmosphere being around in this environment being around this community um, you know it's a great state great people um, it's just a great place to be where are you going to train? You I haven't decided yet. Um, it'll probably be in LA with Travel Games. It's um, my guy who's been training me since for the past two and a half, three years. So, well, I fix something that's not broke.